Okay, I'll go ahead and repeat um, what I said earlier, and that is that we are gonna use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. And in just about um, 10 minutes, we'll start allowing people, um, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, we'll start allowing people to um, answer questions or ask questions rather. And so we'll ask you to use the Q&A function, um, which is at the bottom of your screen. If you do need to use uh, closed captions, that is enabled, so you can use the, closed caption uh, function, which is also at the bottom of your screen. And so what we're gonna do is first, we're going to um, go really quickly over some basic tips um, to help you through the process. Then there were several of you who actually submitted some questions ahead of time. We're gonna go over those. And then we're gonna head into some live questions and answers from you. So again, use that Q&A function and we'll start getting to your questions. One thing that I do wanna say is some of you had some very specific questions. And for those questions that are specifically about your project um, that we won't be able to get into tonight, what I want you to do is email us at blackchurches at savingplaces.org so that we can help you more directly. We'll either help you directly um, at blackchurches, at blackchurches at savingplaces.org, or we might direct you to our office hours um, for one of our staff minute members through our 30 minute sessions, which again, um, you can sign up through blackchurches at savingplaces.org. And I'm still seeing um, people filter in. So again, um, you can start putting in your questions at our Q and A function, and we will either answer your questions right there, or we will, go ahead and um, answer your questions out loud. The other thing that will start to happen in the chat function is for some of those questions that were pre-submitted, we're gonna start an answering those questions in the chat function. Um, those pre-submitted questions, we're gonna start putting those in the chat function. So pay attention to that as well. This meeting and the chat, will be sent to you. So this meeting is being recorded, the chat is being recorded. So both the chat and the meeting will be sent to you in the next few days after this meeting ends. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it over um, to Alaska McInnes, who's gonna start us off with tips and tricks. Hello everyone, um, as a quick introduction, um, it is so good to have all of you in the space tonight to discuss preserving Black churches. Um, I am Alaska McInnes, and I am the uh, director for the National Grants Program. Um, you just heard for, from um, Leslie, who gave us this lovely introduction. Give me one moment. Our senior manager of preserving Black churches. Also here with us um, this evening, we have Tiffany Tolbert, who is the senior director for preservation here at the um, National Trust. Um, via the Action Fund, myself, and also Kelly Gibson, our Senior Manager for the National Grants Program. And today, I just wanted to quickly go over some tips to remember. Um, number one, first and foremost, we'll be referencing this often throughout tonight's webinar. Um, we really want everyone to become familiar with the guidelines um, and the eligibility information on our um, website. We'll be dropping the link for that in the chat. You'll be able to see that. And also on the Frequently Asked Questions webpage, we have a pre-recorded informational webinar that is incredibly helpful in that we actually go through each question on the application to explain exactly what the question means and what we're looking to learn from that question um, on the application. So it's an incredibly valuable resource, something we took a lot of time with and wanted to make sure it was a, a valuable resource for you. So please take the time to take a look at that webinar and get familiar with uh, those um, resources as some of the questions really did link back to the information that was included there. Um, first tip to remember, August 23rd 
at 11.59 local time, your time, is when these applications will be due. So please make sure that then um, information, the application is completed and submitted by August 23rd in order to be considered. It would need to be submitted via Foundant. Unfortunately, we're not able to review any applications that are submitted via email. Um, we will make that PDF of the application available, but that wouldn't be something that we would be able to take and assess as a part of the application pool. We would need all, those, all of those applications submitted through Foundant. Um, additionally, we want you to make note of the fact that spaces count when you're filling out your applications in the character count. So each question where they're, at, they're asking for a little bit of information, a little bit of narrative, um, and there's maybe 500 characters as a limit, every space does count toward that 500 number. Additionally, when you are submitting your application and there's a, we're asking for the main contact for the grant process, please note that this is the person that we would need to engage with about the function of this grant, not necessarily your church leadership. If those are the same people, great. Maintain that and, and submit that information. But if, say, senior leadership is not necessarily the person that would be um, managing the ins and outs of this grant, please put the individual who would essentially walk this process through to completion as the main point of contact, as they will be receiving emails and even follow-ups to make sure that we have everything we need to ensure that this grant is paid out in full or even just help completing um, any questions that we may have on the application itself. Um, additionally, um, if your organization is already in the grant system, and you look to say create a new profile, you will get a warning. So instead of like trying to create a new profile altogether, please be in touch with us at actionfundgrants at savingplaces.org so that we can work with you to actually figure out what's going on and reset the password or, or figure out what your login issue is as opposed to creating a new profile altogether. Um, also another note, um, is that every question that has an asterisk, it is a required question. So please uh, take the time to make sure that all of those are addressed, because if they're not, you won't be able to submit the application. Also, um, a lot of information that we're going to be um, sending out or any questions that we may have clarity that we need, they will be coming from um, one of these emails, essentially. Um, so please make sure that these email addresses are saved and that you're able to receive the emails from these uh, three locations. This is actionfundgrants at savingplaces.org, blackchurches at savingplaces.org, and the grant management system that we use will send notifications from this third one, which is administrator at grantinterface.com. All three of these are emails that you would want to be on the lookout for. If you have questions about your specific project, please email blackchurches at savingplaces.org. And if you'd like to make an appointment for office hours, same thing, email us at blackchurches at savingplaces.org. If you have a question about the system, so any kind of login issues or um, kind of questions around the process of applying, reach out to us at actionfundgrants at savingplaces.org and we can help you um, navigate this process as best we can and get you to a place where you're, you've su successfully submitted your application. Now we have reached the point where we're going to start with the Q&A portion. This is a reminder that we will be monitoring our live Q&A kind of section, that link at the bottom of your um, screen where it says Q&A. You would wanna utilize that for questions that you have. Also, please watch the chat. This is where we'll be dropping um, questions that were submitted via the registration process that we have answered for you. So please don't um, add any additional questions to the chat as that's not necessarily what we're gonna be able to manage um, that discussion for um, at this point, given the volume tonight, which is lovely. 
want to center all of the questions in the Q&A section on Zoom. So with that, um, we're going to go ahead and answer some of the more specific questions that were submitted via the registration process. And I now turn it over to you, Leslie. Thanks, Alaska. So now I'm going to start uh, with some of the questions that we got um, that were pre-submitted. So the first one is, are for-profit companies who purchased a Black church eligible to apply for the grant? And the answer is no. For-profit companies are not eligible. Eligible applicants include historic Black churches, 501c3 nonprofit organizations, and public agencies. Check out our website at savingplaces.org backslash preserving Black churches guidelines for more details. The second question is, we have two capital projects with two different addresses. Can both be submitted as separate projects? The organization will be the same, but the addresses are different. The answer is no. Eligible applicants can submit one application under each funding category. However, if selected, only one application can be funded. The next question is, does a black church need to be on the historic register to qualify? The answer is no. It is not required for properties to be formally listed or designated as historic to apply, but a special emphasis will be placed on sites that have had a prominent physical and or historical place in their community. The next question is, I'm looking for additional information to determine if our historical church um, meets the eligibility requirements. This is again, one of those situations where this is a specific question about a specific project. And I'll remind you that for specific questions about your project, please contact us at blackchurches at savingplaces.org. There was also a specific question about whether we could provide a PDF of the grant application by email or by posting it on our website. I would note that our um, application is actually available on our website, and we're going to drop that application form um, link actually into our chat now. The next question is, if an organization is awarded a grant from another source for the same project submitted in this grant application, can the organization revise their application to cover another phase of the overall project? What would happen in this case? What I would say is you can you can potentially make some revisions to your scope of work, but my suggestion would be to contact us if this happens before, the, before proceeding so that we can figure out what the best course of action is. So you really want to avoid um, a situation like this without actually contacting us. Always contact us when there's a major change like this before proceeding. The next question is, are salaries and operating expenses allowable costs? And the answer is yes. Preserving Black Churches provides funding to support organizational capacity building and operations. The grants are intended to support creation of new staff positions that directly support the preservation and stewardship of historic Black church buildings. Funding cannot be used to support clergy or religious staff. The next question is, if my church was denied an early, an, an, in an early application, should we consider applying again? The answer is yes. Churches that were not selected for funding in the first round are welcome to apply again. The next question is, could funds be used to expand building growth? The answer is, costs associated with planning for or constructing new buildings or structures are ineligible. The next question is, you know, there, were, there have been some questions about what type of letter is required from a particular denomination. As each denomination has a different governing structure, we really want all of you to make sure you are following whatever procedures are appropriate to your denomination to make sure that it is okay for you to submit this application. It would be helpful for us to have something in writing that shows that this application and the proposed project are approved for submittal. The next question is, does this grant opportunity 
apply to different types of um, Christian ministries. There have been various questions about whether various denominations are eligible. We could not list all of the different Christian denominations in this application. The best way to look at it is whether your denomination is located in a historic black church and connected to the culture of that historic black church. The next question is, are church cemeteries also included for grant consideration? And what I would say is capital projects involving cemetery restorations are ineligible. However, under the project planning category, the development of planning documents, guides, and assessment studies for historic Black cemeteries are eligible. Note, the cemeteries must be owned by and contiguously connected to a historic Black church. The next question, if the historic church is in need of extreme repair, does it have to be in operation or in use for service? Does the church need to have a nonprofit organization in place to accept funds? The answer is non-active churches are eligible as long as they are historic black churches. If the church does not have nonprofit status in place, they can use a fiscal agent. Now this includes, we also got this question about if churches are currently applying for 501c3 status. As long as you have 501c3 status, by the time you turn in your application, you are okay, but you just need to let us know, keep us, let us know what's going on. There's been questions about parsonages, about whether they're eligible. And parsonages can be potentially, potentially eligible if they are attached to or directly behind an, 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 an historic black church. The parsonage must also meet the eligibility requirements for a historic black church. For more information about auxiliary buildings of this type, I encourage you to please contact us at blackchurchesatsavingplaces.org. There was a specific question that has to do with churches that are in national historic cultural heritage areas or churches that are in historic districts or things of that nature. And what I would say is that any historic black church that meets eligibility requirements can apply for our Preserving Black Churches grant. Grant categories include capital, project planning, programming and interpretation, organizational capacity building, and operations and endowment and financial sustainability. And those are some of the benefits um, that we offer through this program. There's a question about um, timeline. And the, while the application deadline is August 23rd, um, grantees will not be notified about uh, their status regarding whether they get the money um, until, um, January of 2024. And then it usually takes a little bit of time after that, maybe a month after that for you to receive the money depending on what your funding category is and how long it takes you to turn in um, certain um, paperwork. Connected to that, there was also a question and this came up for several of you about the reasons why some churches are declined and some churches are approved. And these questions are very much connected. And what I would say is that most of the time churches don't receive funding because this is a very competitive process. And there are so many amazing projects that are submitted across this, across the country. And we have, we only have so much funding. But I would say that some specific reasons are not that churches are not funding are funded is number one, not being clear about the scope of work. It is very, very important that you are very clear about what you are proposing to do. Let us know exactly, very succinctly, even if it's bullet points, exactly what your project is. What are you proposing to do? The other thing is not being clear about what your budget is. Sometimes people will ask us, um, 
for $200,000 and they'll just say, we want $200,000 and not really break down um, the budget and let us know what that $200,000 consists of, uh, where those numbers came from and how that ties back to their budget. Sometimes um, projects aren't ready to go, meaning someone has proposed a project, but their application really doesn't indicate that once we give them the funding, that it's very clear that they'll be ready to actually start their project. The other thing is that, the other thing we're looking for is that what you are proposing will really lead to the preservation and sustaining of the resource in question. That's really important that that comes across in your application. And lastly, is really adequately showing the significance of the resource in question. And so applications that don't show that are usually less successful than others. And so on the, on the flip side, um, applications that successfully show all those things are usually um, more successful than others. The other question was, um, we were asked to discuss the ability to apply for more than one grant. And what I would say is that applicants are welcome to apply for all the grants that we have. You can apply for the Preserving Black Churches grant, the African-American Cultural Heritage Action grant, the Fund for Sacred Places grant, and the various other pr preservation grants the National Trust has to offer. When it comes to applying for the Preserving Black Churches Grant and the African American Cultural Heritage Action Fund Grant, you, you will need to understand that if you were to, for instance, uh, apply for a capital grant for Preserving Black Churches and you were awarded, you would need to apply for an action fund grant in a different category. By the same token, if you wanted to apply for a Preserving Black Churches um, fund grant and you were awarded and then you applied for fund for sacred places, you can't use the funds awarded from the action fund to use that as the required match for sacred places. So the best thing to do if you're considering applying for multiple grants is just to talk to a staff member. Contact us at preserving black churches um, at savingplaces.org and just talk talk to us about what you're planning to do so we can um, help you through that. We can help you through that process. But you do have the ability to apply for multiple grants. The other thing is we got some questions from several people that talked about, and this is great, I'm talking about celebrating over a hundred years um, at their church. And one question is whether this applies to their congregation or their church. For this grant, we are looking at historic black churches. So the building should be 50 years or older and built for or by African-Americans. If it was not built for or by African-Americans, it should then be inhabited by an African-American congregation for the last 50 years. Churches, now, churches that now function as a different use could still be eligible as a non-active congregation. They would still need to meet the other eligibility requirements. And our second to last question is, is there any assistance available to a assisted congregation whose property was sold to a developer to a dwindling membership? There have been questions about whether funds can be used to purchase property or prevent the sale of a property. Our grants cannot be used for the purchase of a property or to prevent the sale of a property. Our grants can be used for planning purposes to help you come up with a financial plan, a fundraising plan, or to take a wholesale look at the needs of your church. Consider taking a closer look at our planning grants. And lastly, um, there's a question about um, cost estimates um, and what you need to submit and whether you need quotes on letterhead. And what I would say is we don't need quotes on letterhead at this point in time, but we do need to have an indication that your budget is based on real numbers. Um, so it's really best for you to have um, some sort of bid or, or some sort of quote, something um, that 
shows that your budget and your budget narrative is based on real numbers. And so with that, we will now start our live Q&A. Okay, so we have, are there any restrictions on what category you choose? Last year, our church wasn't able to apply for a capital project if we had recently received one from the National Trust. Is this still the case? Um, so for, for preserving uh, Black churches, uh, this is a um, brand new category, a, a brand new um, grant. Um, and so for right now, we are not restricting if you um, applied last year or yeah, just last year for preserving um, black churches, um, we are not um, preventing you from um, applying again in the, in the same category. Um, and so if you weren't funded um, last year, you can certainly um, apply again in the same category. So the next question is, is this about preserving churches or buildings? If you, had, if you have existed continuously as a congregation since 1891, but have a newer building for which you need assistance, are you eligible for funding? Um, so if you are in a newer building, um, we are not at this time funding newer buildings. Your building needs to be um, at least 50 years or older. The next question is, will a black church that has, that has occupied for more than 60 years, a hundred plus year old historic church that was built by and for white um, domination be considered for this program? Will a black church that has occupied? I, I, if I understand the, if I understand the question correctly, I think that the church itself is a hundred year old church that was originally built um, for a white congregation, um, but a black congregation has occupied it for 60 um, plus years. And if, if that's what you're asking, then yes, it is eligible. Um, does a church have to have been the site of a major national historic event to be competitive? No, and thank you for asking that question. Um, what, we, what we didn't wanna have is a situation, every church does not have to be where Martin Luther King spoke. Um, we, we, there's room for every type of historic event. It can be local, it can be regional, um, it can be national. Um, and so as you are talking about the historic significance, and that's why we don't require it to be designated so as you're looking at um, your historic significance, think about your local significance, regional or national. Um, and it can be you know, one of those three. So it doesn't have to be national significance, but think about how, it's, um, how your church is uh, connected to African-American history. Um, think about how your church has responded um, to different events. Um, so think about it that way, but it doesn't always have to be national significance. Um, see, what are some of the common mistakes in responding to prior grant opportunities? Um, I think I went um, over that with um, the sort of during the pre-submitted um, questions. Okay, so the three competitive bids. Um, so what I would say about the three competitive bids is that we want you to um, do the best you can on the three competitive bids. But we also understand, and, and we've, we've gotten this, this feedback that that's not always possible, especially depending on where you live. 
Um, and so if you've at all, um, so right, and, and so, in, so if you've at all struggle with getting those three bids, just contact us um, at blackchurches at savingplaces.org and let us know what's going on. So that's, so that we can, so that we can figure that out. Um, but don't worry about that. So do the best you can. And if that becomes an issue, just let us know. Is there a specific number of grants to be awarded or is it just dependent upon the submitted budget justifications? Um, so I'm assuming you're talking about the amount of grants that we award generally. And essentially we have a pot of money and we try to uh, award as many grants as we can. And we just look at, you know, all the amazing projects and we just try to um, award as many as possible. I believe last year uh, we awarded 35 um, for over $4 million. Does the church have to report this grant money as income? That's a good question. I don't know. Um, Tiffany, do you know the answer to that question of whether the church has to report this grant money as income? Um, we do not require you to report it as income. Again, that's going to be dependent on your financial structure and what you might need to report as income. Generally, again, if your internal church budget requires you know you to indicate this is funding that is coming in that would be on you all's um direction but we do not require again we are a not-for-profit a 501c3 a granting entity and we're granting it to other 501c3s so if you are a um, um a not-for-profit organization 501c3 and you have to submit your irs 990 you might have to indicate that as grant funding you received over the last um, calendar of fiscal year. But again, you that is the IRS requiring it, not us. And as long as the funding was granted for a specific purpose, you should be in compliance for your 501c3 status. Um, for churches applying for organizational capacity building and operations grants, can you give a general guidance for what types of staff positions meet the funding guidelines? We noted that salaries for religious or clergy are not allowed. Will communications or stewardship meet the um, standards? Also, if there are new positions, can funding be used for technology or software relevant to the position? Um, this is probably something that uh, we could discuss offline, but we're we're basically um, a lot. What we funded before are um, preservation related um, positions, fundraising positions, um, those types of positions that are going to help you ultimately um, preserve and sustain the building, and that can look like a lot of different things. Um, but we can certainly. Um, I, I hope that's helpful. Um, if it's not, or if you need more detail about that. Um, email us at um, blackchurches at savingplaces.org and we can get into that in a little bit more detail. But um, pre preservation um, sort of positions that are going to help you preserve and sustain this building. And a lot what that looks like is um, preservation management, um, fundraising, program management, things of that nature. But we can go into that in a little bit more detail. What are the tax consequences by receiving this grant? We really don't deal with that, that end of it. Um, Cause we're, we, this is not a federal grant. We are not a federal agency. We don't, we don't have you report any of that. Um, so I, unfortunately I can't speak to that. Again, do remember this, we are a not-for-profit ourselves. We are a granting entity. So we are granting 
grant funds to other not-for-profit specific for purposes related to preservation of Black churches. And so tax consequences, we that is not in our purview and we're not granting it to for-profit entities or private individuals as well. So they are going to not-for-profit um, organizations or tax exempt organizations. And so other than keeping your other IRS reporting requirements for your not-for-profit, that you know tax implications are not to be considered on our side with this grant. Um, can somebody, um put the application link, the preview of the application link in the in the chat again. Um, are specific vendors bids required for input input on application? Is National Historic Site, site status required before application? Um, so first, there is no requirement for National Historic Site status. Um, either before or after the application. Um, and in terms of vendor um, bids, again, first of all, it's only if the portion of the work that you're talking about is $50,000 or more. Um, and again, if, you, if you're if you having any issues with that, um, just be in conversations with us at Black Churches at um, savingplaces.org and we can discuss that. Let's see, is this program limited to African-American churches or does other religious communities qualify such as historical African-American mosques? So on a case-by-case -case basis, um, we can consider um, other non-Christian denominations. Um, so please do be in conversation with us because on a case-by-case -case basis, we can um, consider um, non-Christian denominations. Do the project planning, programming, interpretation, and organizational capacity building and operation grants have to be related to a capital project? No. Um, so these are all separate categories. Um, so project planning doesn't have to necessarily um, be related to a capital project. Um, it could be for all sorts of things. Um, same with programming and interpretation and capacity building. So no, so the, so the quick answer is no, it doesn't have to be related to a capital project. There are all sorts of other projects um, that you could do um, under those categories that are not related to a capital project. And then are these reimbursement grants or will awardees receive the funds once the contract is signed? Good question. So what happens is, if you were awarded funds, um, you'll receive a grant agreement. And depending on what type of, um, let me stop for her for a quick sec because I'm sort of seeing two um, different chats happening. Um, for those who are asking questions in the, in the webinar chat, if you could actually put those in the Q&A um, function so that we can make sure to get your question. And Leslie, um, I am answering, if you put it in the Q&A, Leslie is answering live. I am typing in some answers to the questions. So Okay, so you have please, that, Tiffany? Yeah, so okay. please enter okay. them Got in the Q&A and Leslie will continue to answer ones that I answer okay. directly live. Um, so what'll happen is um, once you sign your grant agreement um, and depending on what type of project it is, you'll get an initial payment. Um, so you'll get an initial lump sum sum of money, um, and then you'll get an, an additional lump sum, sum of money um, at another point of time in the project. So depending on what type of project it is, you'll either get it in the middle in the end or at the end. Um, but you'll get a part of the money up front and a part of the money later. So the next question is current church structure opened in 1976. It replaced a historic structure destroyed in a fire in 1972. Church has owned and served the community from this site without interruption since 1867. Interested in project planning grants, any basic eligibility concerns? So it sounds like um, 
the original building isn't there. So my concern is that you basically don't have a historic building there for us to work with, if I'm reading this correctly. All right, current church structure opened in 1976. So that building is less than 50 years old. Um, let me look at how, so that building would be about 47 years old. Well, I'll, sorry, Leslie. <laughs> I'll jump in. So we did have this come up last year in the grant cycle. And what we advised, if your building is close to 50 years, say within five years, call, let's have a conversation so we understand the significance and we will give consideration. So if it's 25 years old, no, but if it is within five years of 50, we will consider it, but we probably want to know more information on the history, the context, the building and significance. So if that's the case, I would email blackchurches at savingplaces.org so um, we can have a better understanding of the project and the building. Sorry. Thanks, Tiffany. If we have already identified a consultant and had preliminary plans of what we need done through a building inspection, should we still only apply for the planning grant, or we'd be eligible for capital projects without full engineering or architectural plans. Um, so if you have already done um, planning work, um, then as part of, so with your capital project, as part of that, um, there's 15% allowed to actually get your um, planning documents done, um, but we will need to, but we will need to have some enough plans to actually see what you're doing. Um, so, so you do, so as long as you have enough of a plan so that we can tell what your project is, but if what you're saying is that you don't sort of have your permit documents, that's fine because if you were grant, if you get the, the capital grants, 15% of that you could use to actually develop those um, engineering and architectural plans. But you just need to have enough of a plan for us to be able to tell what, what you're actually doing. Thank you. Okay, next is, are all estimates and architectural drawings or electrical design docs required to be completed when you apply for a capital improvement project? If you do not have all of them yet, would you suggest applying for a planning part of the growth? Um, so again, it depends. I, I think the capital project is, is definitely our most competitive grant. And so my question for, what, for you would be, if you've done the planning work, but just don't have all of your drawings, um, so the question is, have you, do you, have you done the actual planning work? And do you have enough of a plan to show us what you're doing? If the issue is just that you don't have permit sets, you can, if you were to get, again, if you were to get the grant, you could use part of your capital funds to get that. Um, but if you haven't done enough planning, um, to be able to show us what you're doing, then you're probably more at the, the planning stage. Okay, it says, how, how do you determine if the capital project is maintenance instead of capital? Um, I'm trying to understand I mean, I think part of that is probably a, a kind of planning question. And that is, have you had someone come in and sort of look at your building and sort of tell you what needs to be done? Do you have a full understanding of what needs to happen at your building? Um, because 
a capital project could be a capital project could be anything from restoring your windows to repointing your brick to um, you know replacing your roof to um, you know there's all sorts of to you know repairing your plaster I mean so some of that could so it depends on what your definition of maintenance is um, but capital projects looks it's both it could be a big project and it could be a, 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 a tiny a tiny project. Um, so it could be that we need to discuss your project a little bit um, for us to have a little bit of better understanding of what, what's going on at your church. Um, so I what I might suggest is that you reach out to us at blackchurches at savingplaces.org so we can have a little bit of a better understanding of um, what's going on in your project. Um, cause from my point of view, um, if you need work done on your project, it sort of doesn't matter whether it's, you know, maintenance or like it, what the label is. If, if there's an issue at your church where not doing it could lead to an issue at your church, cause we want to make sure that it's pre preserved and sustained. Um, so if you have that sort of, um, issue at your church, um, then we want to help you with it if, if we can. Um, so um, why don't you um, email us and, and let us know a little bit more about your project. Does the church application um, be from a historical membership but has moved out of the historical building? Um, so maybe the question is whether it's a, maybe it's a non-active church, maybe? Um, it sounds it sounds like maybe it's a non-active church, and if it's a non-active church, um, that's that's perfectly fine. Um, it could still be eligible. It just might be eligible for less money. Um, so I, I need to know a little bit more um, about the situation. And again, just you know, feel free to reach out to us and um, let us know a little bit more about your project. But non-active um, um, churches. Um, or non-active congregations um, can, um, can, can apply. Um, we have the question about um, dropping the link of the application to PDF, which we did do. Um, there's a question, can you repeat the reasons why proposals are not funded? And so just to summarize, um, some of the reasons why proposals are not funded is um, lack of clarity in the budget. Uh, lack of um, clarity around how the project is gonna positively impact um, preserving and sustaining the building. Um, lack of clarity about how once the project would be funded that the project would be ready to go. Um, lack of clarity around um, historic significance. Um, I would say that is some of the, um, big reasons why projects are funded, not funded. But the other really big reason why projects are funded, I mean, I will say that we got, I think around 1300 letters of intent um, last year. So a really big need with some really amazing, um, you know, projects from across this country. Um, so that's the other really big reason. Our historic church has an association with NHL local landmark that was once owned and stewarded by us that is now owned by the city we are in. This landmark was recently renamed to honor our founding pastor. And we are working with the city to determine how to convey the name change and our church legacy of the property. How do we express that in this application? And can we apply if the city applies as well? So I would really suggest. Well, first of all, if if the city owns the property, you would need permission from the city to apply. So you're you're always going to need per permission of the of the property owner um, to apply. And in a, in a situation like this, I it, so no. So it, unless you have a uh, permission from the property owner to apply, you wouldn't able to both be apply. Uh, 
you would be able to both um, apply. Um, so that's the first thing. Um, hopefully it's a situation where maybe you could work together, but I, I, I obviously don't know what the situation is. Um, in terms of how you, if, let's say you could get permission from the city to apply, you could work together. How do you uh, express this? Um, and I'm assuming you're trying to express sort of the importance of the renaming maybe. And, and that can be done in, as part of the significance um, section is um, talking about the importance of the pastor and the name change and making sure to tie. And this, this gets back to an earlier question about, you know, whether something has to be of national significance and some, something like that is, if this um, pastor is important locally, then talk about why that pastor is important locally and so important locally that there's this name change. Um, so, um, so just just talk about that um, as as best you can, as and as succinctly um, as you can. For capital projects, um, must three contractors be provided with the application, or can choose quotes just be included in the application? Um, again, try your best with the three bids. If you can't, um, you know, just let us know. Let's let's talk about it. Leslie, can I jump in and answer this question because I think it might be relevant to? Sure. Uh -huh. Go right ahead. So someone asked, we are applying for a capital project and have plans done and are about to begin the permit and city approval process. We anticipate having permits by January. Will this be considered ready to go? It would be considered ready to go, but keep in mind that if you are awarded capital funding, part of our process before we distribute funds is we do have to approve the scope of work to ensure that it is preservation and meeting our criteria and standards. So if you do have your plans approved by the city or have your permits, that does not guarantee that we will automatically approve those plans. So just make sure to factor that into your schedule that if you are awarded funding, you will have to submit your scope of work again, which will be reviewed by our senior preservation architect to ensure that it is meeting preservation standards. And once that is approved, then we will follow what is laid out in the grant agreement in terms of dispersing funds. So I just want everyone to keep that in mind. Thanks, Tiffany. Um, so the next question is about bids, but we've gone over this a few times. Um, the next question is about the grantee selection committee and that's comprised of staff. Um, yeah, so our grantee with all of our grants is an internal process with staff of the National Trust and the African American Cultural Heritage Action Fund. So um, this program does not involve <clears throat> external reviewers. And next question is um, again about the uh, bidding process. The next question. Okay, so does this grant apply to installing an elevator or accessibility options in a historically black church? So this actually came up a lot last year and accessibility is really, really important, um, especially in churches um, with aging um, populations. Um, and what we found is that um, almost a lot the immediate answer was to install an elevator or the proposal was to install an elevator or, in, or install a lift. And what we want for churches to really consider is looking at accessibility of their, of their whole church because there's more to accessibility um, than just an elevator. It's the site, it's hearing impaired, it's sight impaired, it's how you enter the site. It's, it's more than just the elevator. And so for those who are interested in accessibility, what we're asking is 
that first um, you look at a planning grant, that if you haven't done um, planning um, for accessibility, that the first thing we would want you to apply for um, is a planning grant to really look at your church as a whole around accessibility and to really do um, look at an accessibility plan for your whole church. Um, and if you've already done the planning for that, then to look at um, applying uh, for a capital grant for accessibility. Um, so I would say that in general um, for accessibility, because it's, it's, it's such an important um, thing for churches. Um, the next question is, our church was located next to the cemetery built during the 1800s, but was rebuilt years ago on a location that is not near the cemetery now. Does this keep us from being able to apply for funding for restoration? Can we apply for funding to have our cemetery promoted through community tours or as part of teaching programs for school children? Um, so the great thing is that while um, our, our grants um, for cemeteries do not cover um, capital improvements, it does um, cover planning. Um, so in terms of sort of the idea of um, teaching programs or, or promotion or, or something like that, um, that would be something more that would fall um, under planning um, for our cemetery, um, for our cemetery grants. Um, it does need to be directly associated and, and owned um, by the historic black church and that um, and that church needs to meet the eligibility um, requirements. Um, the question is, it does say the church was rebuilt. So the question for me, I, I think I need to know a little bit more about uh, the situation. Um, to be able to answer this properly. So I need to know more about um, the church now, because it sounds like the church that it was originally associated with is no longer there. Um, so I think a little bit more information is needed. Um, so why don't you contact us at um, Black Churches at savingplaces.org so we can talk about this a little bit more so we can get a little bit more information. The next question is, if the church is older than 50 years, but the building is not, so perhaps maybe you're saying the congregation is older than 50 years, but the building is not, is the church still eligible? Um, it would depend on exactly how old the building was. Um, to Tiffany's point earlier about um, buildings that were maybe 45 to 50 years. Um, so, we might need a little bit more information in this case to understand how exactly how old the building in question is. Um, so um, maybe contact us directly so we could um, know a little bit more um, about your um, about your situation. The next question is. Um, how do supportive letters to be written and presented and um, and do they need to be on certain letterheads depending on where they come from? Um, I, I wouldn't say we're gonna be picky on, on the letterheads. Um, you know, you can, um, you know, whatever sort of supportive letters um, you wanna um, submit will be fine. Again, the only thing that we do really wanna see um, again, is something indicating that you have um, permission and support to actually um, submit this project and application. Um, Wesley, I'm in Alaska. Some people are having issues with the link to the PDF application. Can you all explain what they should be seeing when they go to that link that we share? Uh, they should just be seeing the application. Someone says, I use the link and it takes me to, to view application forms without creating an account, click here. But when I click here, it doesn't show a sample application. Huh. So maybe if you all could just check on that while we're here, Nicole. Yes, I'll, um, 
I'm sharing my screen right now, but um, I'm wondering if Leslie, I mean, if Kelly, you can look into that really quickly and see what's happening there. Yeah, because the link that I, let's see, because I just clicked on the link I have here and it's working. Let me try this. Let's see if this one works. Well, we'll continue with the questions, but if Alaska and Kelly, maybe if you all could check on that and just put the link back in the chat. So we're working on that, you all. And again, we will send out all of the links after this session as well to those. Yeah, that this one works. I just put one that I just checked myself that should lead just directly to a preview. So the link should just lead to the application form. It won't allow you to actually um, apply. It's just like a PDF that just allows you to look at the question. Great, someone says that that worked. Thank you, Ariana. Sorry. Um, so it's eight o'clock. I'm happy to um, stay on and, and keep answering questions, but I do want to respect people's time. Um, Maybe we can go another 10 minutes and answer questions live. Um, we do have the questions in the Q&A, so even if we don't get to them on this webinar, if you go ahead and enter them and we can follow up um, and update our FAQ, but it's important to remember uh, what we'll do is really address the questions that apply to everyone. If it's about your specific church, your specific request, email blackchurches at savingplaces.org so we can start setting up one-on-one -on -one appointments and we'll have more time to go in depth with you on your project. So you can email right now, blackchurches at savingplaces.org and we'll start following up with those appointments. Yeah. Let's see, I'm just gonna scroll through these. Um, so you don't need to step. So there's a question about um, a church that has different sections to it. You can just ap apply for the, the, the church as a whole. Um, there's a question is our church building is more than 100 years old, built by former slaves, the roof caved in after a storm in 2020, destroying the front part, but leaving the back part intact, can we apply for capital funding for the remaining part that is standing? Um, that would be a question that I would ask you to email Black Yeah, Church reach out to us directly on that. Work. Yes. Um, I'm seeing a lot of questions about um, combining projects for capital projects. Um, it is okay if you have a couple um, multiple small projects to combine it into one overall request for your church. And again, if you email blackchurches at savingplaces.org, we can give you guidance on how best to structure that in your application. Um, someone is asking a question about LOI feedback from last year. Um, what we can do is if you email us at blackchurches at um, savingplaces.org, if there were comments left from the reviewers um, from um, the last cycle, we will do our best to get those um, comments to you. So email us with the um, name of your church, and then we um, I will look up those comments um, and um, get back to you as soon as possible. Leslie, someone asked about the endowment grant, and I think this might be our first question we had about the endowment, and they want yeah. to know. So for an endowment grant, can our existing endowment funds be su sufficient for matching funds? Um, no. Yes. Um, oh, sorry. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the endowment funding category and financial sustainability is to grow existing preservation endowments or maintenance endowments as you already have or to create new endowments. So if you do have an existing endowment, you can apply for matching funds for the value of that endowment as it currently exists. But during the application process, we do ask you to show proof of that existing endowment, that it's invested, um, the balance, and you, again, it's a one-to-one -one match. So you cannot apply for more than what you have on hand. 
You can still apply if you have an existing endowment and you don't want to use those funds at match, but maybe you want to have a campaign to raise additional funds and that could be the match. So that is eligible if you do have existing funds already. Again, they have to be currently invested in an endowment and for the purpose of preservation or maintenance of the building. I'm going to put the PDF. Somebody's asking for the PDF. I'm going to put it in the chat one more time. So there's still so many questions, and I'm I'm sorry we couldn't get to all of them um, in this session, but we are going to answer um, all of your questions in the Q and A. And um, um, I do want to thank all of you um, for joining us. There is another Q&A session uh, tomorrow night. It's a little later than this one. It's at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard to get to our folks on the West Coast. But if you do want to stay up later, you're welcome to join us tomorrow night. Um, and I do just want to thank you so much um, for joining us.